Why are you looking at me like that for? Just waiting for you to start the show. You're looking at me like you're fucking in a weird way. Well, I'm just looking at you, mate, ready to start the show whenever you are. Why don't we start it now? Let's just say we're off. Yeah, we're on. Yeah, we're, we're on. away. We're up and away. So why are you looking at me funny, Charlie? I'm not looking at you funny. I'm you looking are. at you. I'm just looking at you. It's been Describe a while, hasn't funny. it? funny. What does funny mean? Not funny, ha-ha. Like, yeah. You're almost like... Like there's something just going on in your brain, something. something going on in your brain that you've been thinking about no, for a, about three weeks because we've not seen, we've well, we've seen each other, but we've not been on together for three weeks. We haven't been on the show for a while. I had a lot of dirt on you, but it's sort of the time's passed, mm. you know, you kind of get in the present. I'm a bit just sort of all over the shop because I've got no car at the moment because oh. I had a car crash months ago, months ago. And then I dropped, I had to take my car yesterday to Manly when I live nowhere near Manly. Had to take it over there because that's where the insurance company said I had to go. And it's a little scratch on the front. And I'm like, oh, how long till I can come back? And they're like, two weeks. I was like, oh. Two I weeks know. for a scratch. I know. Why are you making me drop it now was my issue. I don't really get it. <clears throat> I reckon you, maybe you just got to drive around with a bit of a scratch on your car door. I would. I'd happily have a scratch. I don't really care. Well, but you, anyway. Well, you clearly you do because otherwise you wouldn't have gone and got it. You'd have just turned around and gone, don't worry about it, guys. Oh, well, I think I had to because it was like an insurance thing. So like the bus reached out, said it was my fault. So then I had to get it fixed because like uh, I had to go through the process of it anyway. So I may as well get it fixed then. So it's really affected you to the point of like <laughs> it pissed you off. So you're coming into way. Yeah. Affected. Uh, yeah. One thing about you though that did I did that did catch my eye is you always talk about oh, I'm not cold, never cold. You like wearing shorts and t-shirts mm. everywhere. Like even during winter to prove some point that you're tough for some reason. Because you're obsessed with proving that you're tough. No. You always, that's why you chose a career in rugby league in the first place. You had to no. prove you were tough. Um, but the you were calling a footy game with a couple of blankets on you the other day as well, weren't you? Yeah, I was, yeah. Yeah, it was cold in that room. So I, I asked if there was a blanket and there was. Yeah. So I put it on. Two blankets, though, not just the one. I was given two. So what, <laughs> what do you mean you were given two? Well, you, I didn't. I, um, Dave. Yeah. Who one of the the panelists at Triple M? Yeah, great man, Dave Thomas. Great legend. man. What like reckon there's a bit of madness in there? Yeah, that he suppresses. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, he's like, hilarious as well. He's very dry. These guys ever. Very dry. Yeah. Quick witted. Yeah. Timing. This isn't a Dave Thomas podcast, though. No, it's this not. This is about you <laughs> needing blankets. Yeah, I, I was a bit cold, and I used some. I took, uh, uh, what do you do when you're cold? You try and warm up, and I um, put some blankets on. Yeah, I bounced around in shorts. Got jeans on today because I needed to wear jeans for an occasion. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's just that's pretty normal. I I've just figured out why you're so um, tense, uptight, aggressive. I wouldn't describe um, myself like that, but like. Walking around like you've got, like you, you're a victim. I know what it is. What's that? We've not said happy birthday to you. <laughs> That's what it is, isn't it? Well, you had you did say happy birthday to me. I was with you on Sunday. And you said no, but on an too. official buy round because yeah. you want everybody to come out and sing happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Yeah, I love that. You've shit. turned twenty nine. We missed last week. We didn't get you a cake. Yeah, no and need. <laughs> I actually hate birthdays. It's a bit aggressive. I, I do. I, do I reckon you I hate the extra attention. I'd rather just be left to my own devices. Yeah, but I reckon you're saying that because really you want everyone to be like, <laughs> "Oh, Charlie, happy birthday!" Like the old like, "Oh, leave me alone! Don't make a fuss! <laughs> Don't make a fuss!" God I help I, us when you're thirty next year. Yeah, no gift as well from you. Yeah, your, you make a lot of money. I thought that you'd have oh. a gift for me of some sort. You know, like a. <laughs> Don't know. I'm saving it for your thirtieth. Yeah, mate, you went away for your twenty eighth. Do you remember last year you were away for your twenty eighth birthday? I didn't actually go away for my you birthday. You went away early for a week. Just, yeah, I think I was Is just it? away. I don't. I think I was away for a week. Where did I go? No, you went away for a weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's On your twenty right. eighth, and you went away a bit earlier this time for your birthday. They didn't go birthday. No, I didn't. God. I didn't. What is going to happen? The buy round is going to shut down next year. Well, I, might have have to, a, I think it's like a birthday month. Yeah, well, I might, maybe I'll go to Europe for a month next year. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. I actually might do that. It's a good because idea. Because Mr. I don't care about my birthday. Yeah, I need a month in Europe mm. for my birthday. It's a great idea, actually. You only turn 30 once. So I'll take a month off next year. Um, Parramatta Eels, there's been some massive news that's broken about them, Jimmy, this afternoon. Um and basically what Michael Chambers is reporting in the Sydney Morning Herald is that post-game on Saturday night after the game, um, Mitchell Moses came in and was furious. 
not only just at the performance of a club, but Mark O'Neill, who's the football manager, um, was in the room as well. And Mitchell Moses heavily criticised the roster management of Parramatta, which is really interesting place to do that post game. There's a lot of emotion, obviously, after the loss, criticising the roster management. I mean, if you're one of the other players there, that wouldn't feel great. But he is apparently furious with the situation they find themselves in. Look, I get it. And he's right. But sometimes we do act on emotion and I'm the first to hold my hand up and said some things post-game that maybe you, you think you, you want that back. Um, because I don't think anybody is out there purposefully not trying to win. But I think what's clear is Mitchell Moses is, is by far and away the best player at Parramatta. Um, that influences the result, um, that is clearly trying his best, um, clearly putting a, a lot into his football, cares about his football, committed long-term to that football club, and he's probably looking around going, what on earth have I signed up for here? Mm. Like, he had options to leave, um, and he's looking around thinking, well, why am I doing all this? Like, I, I, And I'm probably as well sold the dream that we're going in the right direction. This is the club to be at. We're going places. So we've all known that, that that's happened before to different players. Um, they've been, some have clauses in their contract to um, help keep the club accountable to their promises. I don't know if that's the situation with Moses, but he has every right to be frustrated. Um, and some of the things that he said are true and correct. But saying them publicly is uh, a different matter. So obviously you speak on emotion, but what is the desired outcome for Mitchell Moses? You could say, well, look, I just want my club to be better. But is that the way to, is that the way to do it? Mm. He wants the club to be better. He wants his team to be better. What is the best way to do it? To publicly speak about roster mismanagement, which is true, or behind closed doors, have conversations because, the, like, the truth hurts. And when you're in that time of crisis, it is awful. Yeah. And people are looking around. It, uh, am I the problem? Am I being shopped? Like, I've been part of that towards my time at the end of the Bulldogs. It was a complete and utter mess. Nobody knew who to trust. Um, Parramatta are in a not too dissimilar spot with some really good play or players that maybe have gone past their best and their potential mm. um, and how they look to manoeuvre those players. that We said it in the mid-season review. Looking at Parramatta, all of their players, when I think about the individuals at Parramatta as a football club, they are an attacking-minded team. That's who they are. Moses, attack. Brown, attack. Forwards, Campbell Gillard, attack. Junior Baller, attack. Matteson, Lane, uh, Hopgood, Cartwright, attack, attack, attack. Even Lomax coming in, attack. Mm. Blaze Talangi, attack. Like Gutherson, probably more noted for his like defensive efforts and like his all these effort areas in and around the, the, the football. But other than that, that it's it's a very attack minded team, which doesn't and also the way that they play, I think they lead the NRL, or certainly when we did that mid season review, they led the NRL uh, offloads per game. So that's a bit of their attacking style. But mm. what that's not translating to is to results. Yeah. And the issue with their roster is, as Jamis reports in this article, they are very top heavy. You've got Mitchell Moses on about one point four million. Junior Barlow and Gutherson were both on about 850, but they've got ratchet clauses, so they go up to a million. Then you've got um, uh, Dylan Brown, close to a million. Then you've got Lomax coming in, another highly paid player. Hop Hopgood's on okay money. Like a lot of their salary cap is taken up. I mean, if you look at just those four players before that I named, that's like 40% of their cap. But that's true in most cases. So As it, much so with with Parramatta across like these, I would say across most of the seventeen clubs. Yeah. Um, okay. The, well, if that is the case, that most of them, it's pri it's called Price's Law. Yeah. So, 
I'm not going to try and botch this up, but it's something like uh, 50% of the work is done by like 15% of the people. Like it's, and it, and it, it's a crazy law that it can be applied across uh, many domains, but it would work in the salary cap. Like most, most salary caps would be 50% of the salary cap would be taken by about um, the square root of 30. <laughs> you lost me there. Square root of 30. I don't know what that is. Let's work it out. S- square root of 30. Yeah. Does everything have a square? It would be like 5.333 or something like that. Yeah. It, I, I would have hazard a guess. That would be my educated guess. That, yeah. And that could be applied across um all teams yeah you lost me there with the mass equations that's okay though no, no, that's no. okay well, that you well, did though it's okay no. that you did cuz i've got something just to add to that the um either way though like if there's a lot of money they've got in players like guys like junior bolo and clint gutherson they're maybe not yeah, million so dollar players root, anymore sorry square root of 30 on, yep. is 5.4 okay cool nice so i reckon hot so they are a bit more top heavy than than your thing because you look at they've got about forty percent of their cap in four players, forty five percent of their cap even in four players. Yeah, so it's a bit top heavy. It, but but we're I getting bogged down the numbers here, though. Yeah, the, no, but I think because it really annoys me when they say like, "Oh, the average NRL player is on like three hundred thirty three thousand. Like, no NRL players on that. Mm. No NRL players on that much money. No, no one's averages don't exist. No, no player plays the average number of NRL games. Mm. Like it, it mathematics and percentages can be um, twisted around to suit a narrative, but most clubs would have that. Unfortunately for Parramatta, they've got too much money in players that aren't performing. Yeah, yeah. That that's fundamentally what it comes down to. So, forget what I've said about prices, law, and numbers, percentages, and square roots. That does exist, but just know that Parramatta have got players um, that are taking up massive amounts of money that aren't performing at that level anymore. Yeah. It's not to say they can't get back to that level as well. I mean, you look at what Shane Flanagan's done with some of these Dragons players this year. If they get the yeah. right guy in, he can get the best out of them. And Lomax coming next year, that is going to be a weapon for them in attack. I know it's another attacking player though, unfortunately. But <clears throat> I guess back to Mitchell Moses' blow up. Is that a big deal at all? Or it's just heat of the, heat of the battle, bit of emotion, you move on with your life the next day. Um, geez, Charlie, it, it it's hard to know because I don't know the group, but I've been I've been in dressing rooms where people have been scathing of each other, and I've been in dressing rooms where people have come to blows on the training field. Now, I've always viewed it as. It's not that players will disagree and say things and do things. That's that's the competitive nature. That's the sort of personality type that is attracted to a sport like ours. But that's that's not the issue. The issue is whether or not they can they can patch it up. And whether or not they can go to Moses and go, maybe it's, mate, you're right, I'm going to get my shit together. Or is it going to be a case of, well, hang on, who does he think he is? He's played one good game of origin. Where's he been for us? Because that narrative can soon set in. So Mitchell Moses, I know he's the best player for Paramount. I think everybody knows it. When you're in that dressing room, if he thinks he knows it, and we're all going, hang on, you are doing it for power and you you're, you're calling us out. Well, you can you can lo- he can lose it. You know how they say the coach loses the dressing room. Yeah, your star player can lose the dressing room, and they can isolate themselves. And you know it, if if talks or this eventuates to a place of maybe Mitchell Moses wants out. Things can you think it's bad at Parramatta now? Mm. Things can get a lot worse. He signed a long term deal though, so he's they've got. I think this was the first of a five year deal, so he's got four more years to go after this. Yeah, that's that's fine. But 
if you're if you if you're that player that is the, the long term plan mm. and the dressing room don't like him that can be an awful place to be it's um they got to get this coach decision right and by all accounts after the game this weekend we we should get an announcement well, yeah um, that, that, that that's it. They, they, i think I'm only going off what I hear. I don't know this. Like at board level, it's very much a um, uh, an, an, a non-football style board, so to speak. Of those are the decision makers. They are you know, they are quoted as being the bean counters, and uh, maybe that's a, a, a tad disrespectful because you know you're running a business, so you'd have a, a fair idea of. Um, well, no, you're running a business, and, and also with, with the the emotion of sport, you shouldn't be blindsided or surprised whether or not that is the best people to have is is up for debate but they need a they need a leader for their coach and I think that now um becomes the number one trait that they would seek and then the number one issue is who can lead this group of men I don't need a game plan I don't need a system I need someone that's going to bring this group together because when when your star player is speaking like that, it it appears as though there's cracks. And when you look at the quality of players within that roster, they are clearly underperforming and they have been for a long time. Massively underperforming. So who can lead and who can coach them to a better standard of football consistently mm. like rather than so that probably for me i've the the three candidates i know um craig young would be amazing for it but it appears though that the two main front runners are josh hannay and uh, jason riles now i've heard a little bit about jason riles in terms of he's not financially motivated he's done a big learning curve that where he sacrificed dollars before he also, if you believe what you hear, was the front runner and had agreed things at the Dragons until he looked and went. That thing, I, I believe that there was issues he thought uh, were going to be resolved that then weren't, and he just walked away. Mm. So he's a man of principle. So that, for me, just nudges Riles slightly ahead to say he's the man that can lead but bring this group together and then lead it back into a, a consistent football side that can challenge for the eight yeah. i do however think that they do need some changes within that roster and you need someone to move quickly because there are some saleable assets there but i don't think you can have that similar style of player it's just it well it's not working yeah it will be interesting to see if it is that three horse race. Dean Young, Josh Hannay, Jason Rolls, maybe someone else emerges. Rugby league isn't always that simple. Just because they're saying it's a race in three doesn't mean it actually is. Well, I, I guess what you're suggesting is would they make a play for a coach that's yeah. already under contract? Correct. Yeah. So there are a couple that sort of spring to mind. It's been done before. Mixed year for the Cowboys with Todd Payton, but obviously they've now got an incredible run home. We're going to talk mm. about the Cowboys a bit later on. Hasler. Hasler. I mean, whether it's the Gold Coast or Paramount Eels, obviously the Paramount Eels job would be more enticing. You can't rule out um, someone like Andrew Webster. Yeah. I know he's very happy in New Zealand Warriors and the future is bright. They've got James Fisher-Harris coming over. They're building something really great over there, but you never know. No, Come back to a, a, a club like Parramatta, break their premiership drought. Well, I think if you are a coach at a club, so again, with all due respect to Warriors, Cowboys, titans like they would have their if you're the coaching that team and Parramatta call you would have your head turned mm. you're not doing billy slater and just saying no i'm queensland's coach that's it like that's different those three are going oh like you'd naturally want to know yeah where, where you know like coach bellamy would just go no yeah cam sorrell no yeah, not in, I don't even care what you've Trent got to Robinson, say. No. Trent Robinson, no. Yeah, but the, at those particular clubs, unfortunately, because of their recent history, would would be wanting to know. Yeah, 
Well, speaking of the Cowboys, they are going to lose their veteran halfback, it looks like, at the end of the year. Chad Townsend, he went up there on big money, and at the time it was hammered that deal, but he's proven to be quite valuable for them. They played a Premier League uh, prelim final in his first year, but now it looks like, Jimmy, the Chookies are going to get Chad Townsend, which is very, very left field, but obviously they've got Luke Keery leaving next year, and maybe he can just provide some veteran leadership for them. Well, uh, for, for me, it makes sense because, and it's my mix smart play, Charlie. So. I love it. Yeah, um, been thinking about this. So it's just a uh, you lose an experience, experienced half in Kiwi. So what are you going to look to replace that with an experienced half? So who's on the market? I believe, and they were in for Sean Johnson a while ago. He didn't want to move back to Sydney. Townsend did want to move to Sydney. They've got him at a very good price. You know that's going to be talking about now about the Roosters. They get this player that's. Um, Gone from seven fifty to two fifty three hundred. Is that fair? Well, in the case of Chad, Chad Townsend, I think yes, it is. So, I, I for me, it makes sense. He just takes over the reins from from Luke Kiru. We've seen um, the value of experience in the halves, especially with a youngster like Sam Walker. Um, you know, maybe him and Sandon Smith work together. That is a lot of inexperience um it puts a lot a lot of stress on tedesco and brandon smith um in as those other spine members to, to have that level of experience and um more more game management and dealing with the highs and lows and different situations that the nro will throw at you so i i actually really don't mind this chad townsend acquisition and for the price that he's coming yeah it's a steal and he might not start there's obviously there's he's not guaranteed to start some of the talk is sandon smith might get the 5-8 jersey Connor watson Connor watson i think he'd do a great job Connor watson um but yeah i mean he wants to be back in sydney chad townsend because obviously maybe post life he's post career he's thinking about there post footy career i believe he wants to get into the media doesn't he, he does yeah he's got a podcast chad townsend it's great it's really good listen um that just by the way, you mentioned Mick Smart. You can make you got to check out this Mick Smart if you haven't already. You've been banging on about it, but your choice of two cheeseburgers, two chicken and cheese, but two chicken and cheeseburgers, or one of each. Gotta go one of each. Yeah, you kind of if you put that on offer, you go on one of each every day, aren't you? Of course you are. Small fries and a drink, just six bucks ninety five. Great for when you're at near the end of payday. Cheap lunch. Um, and, of course, it excludes meat delivery and it's available for a limited time. But it is fantastic. Speaking of the roosters, though. They're, sorry, just on the McSmart, yeah. they've done what a lot of people do anyway. Yeah, of course, yeah. Like a lot of people do that? Well, it was Brandon Smith's meal. Yeah. The Hectic Cheese really needs to get a full-time sponsorship deal with Maccas. Happy to help out Brandon Smith if necessary. Happy to step in there and do that deal if needed. Broker one. Broker one, yeah. Mm. Um, but speaking of the roosters, it is going to be a huge transition period for them next year, isn't it? The Hargreaves. Mean, yeah. So Elite Manu. Manu. Um Yeah, it's a it's gonna be a huge transition. Mm. There's someone else we're forgetting there, Luke Keary. Yeah. Yeah, like that's some of their veteran leaders that they're losing. It's gonna be very, very interesting to see how they compete next year. Yeah. It it is. Um I I think it helps them going on a big all in push towards this back end of the season. Um post origin. They'll be getting after it. We're going to see a much, much more improved Roosters than even from the standards that they've set already in this season. They're a, a lot better than last year. Um, you know, it's funny that obviously some people are blowing up about the um, Marky Mark coming over from Union potentially early. He's not going to get in the team. This year? No. Well, he would this weekend. You think about it, you've got Michael James playing center and Satili Tupanu playing center. He, the, He's going to be a freak. He'll be he'll be good. Yeah. Well, mate, the, the speed of our game is on another level. Yeah. He'll he'll have it, it's gonna it's it's gonna fast track his development because he'll play New South Wales Cup. But you look at the Roosters, Suwalihi and Manu in the centers, Tedesco at fullback, yeah. Dominic Young and Tupu on the wing. Yeah, he's not Mark, making that. He's team. not making that no, team. But there's so, a couple of injuries at the moment. Yeah, but a couple, couple yeah. And but then Billy Smith. Like yeah, we don't there know has he's been, back yet though. No, he's I I don't know. I saw him at a cafe the other week actually and was, <laughs> I don't think he, yeah, he was a bit lost. I felt so 
Did you have a chat to him? Yeah, yeah. I felt yeah. really bad for him, man, yeah. because you have liked what I've seen from him. Just the, the game can be so bloody cl- cruel at times. Yeah. But just on this Marky Mark coming in, and yeah, the rules are there, thirty thirty. But we get a player from Union, which there is a an advantage for our game as a whole. But I don't think we should stress as much as maybe what some are because he ain't, I just can't envisage him playing in yeah. the NRL. Like, I I think it would be a, a rude awakening just how difficult our game is. Well, Carter Gordon has done done the same thing for the Titans. He's going to be just playing Queensland Cup this yeah. year, apparently. Well, it makes yeah. sense. Just get get up to speed. Yeah. it uh, The metres per minute can be th- through the roof. Do you reckon that's still the same? Like, I don't know much about Union, but do you reckon that's still the same for, like, outside backs as well? Like, if he was going to play on the wing... Is that maybe the easiest position to get up to speed with? No, centre would be. Centre would be okay. In terms of like uh, physical demands. Yeah. But the 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 trade-off is they've got the biggest decisions to make defensively. Yeah. And once you expose yourself that you are a liability in defence at centres, teams will just focus their attack to come to you. And if you're not, if you if you're slightly off the speed a little bit, teams will notice that, and then your decision making's poor. Like you'll you'll just see teams' game plan to just set up the open uh, the side against you to to come back at you, and they'll give you that give you an absolute nightmare. Yeah, mate. I think when you have a chance to like get someone from Union straight away, like I think the, like he's obviously coming anyway, but why not bring him in? Why not bring him in so then when he actually plays next year, he is more up to speed? Yeah, look, a bit, well, the, the reason being is obviously there's the June 30 deadline there. And, and and that is there to protect the integrity of the competition. Because how many, a, a couple of years ago where, you know, um, Tavita Panga Jr. goes to Penrith. Not for Luma to not the for Luma to the Storm. Like with a couple of games to go, basically teams down the bottom end were loaning out their better players to teams at the top. That I like that, but are you, mate? It's I it, liked it, it at the it, time. It, I did. It's it's a it's not an it's not um it's not with for me. It's not. It's just not right. Of integrity of our game. Yeah, but, integrity yeah. of the sport in terms of. It's not in the spirit of the game to like stash a bit of money away, yeah, and then bring someone in for like three months, pay them for three months, and then the other team get salary cap dispensation and they spend that the following year. It's bullshit. It's not what it's not what the game is about. So you capitalize off losing, mm. and you know the stronger teams get stronger. No. Did you like the loan system when it was at the start of the year, like when Absolutely. Harry Graham went to Tigers? I, yeah, I, I loved I'd, it. I'd like to see that maybe come back. You know, I, know well, it was, I think it's still there. Okay, yeah, but teams don't do it. Because I guess you can just play your player in cup and then they're still getting the experience. Harry Grant was a, in a very unique position as well where like yeah. behind Cameron but, Smith, Brandon Smith. But but all, but also that like for a young player to come into your team, so let's say the example of the Tigers and Harry Grant, it is a very extreme position, but there's only the Tigers that – well, sorry, to be only – a team like the Tigers that they he could go to because they'd be willing to accept that because it's a bit of a slap in the face for the rest of your team. Mm. Eels would have taken him this year. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. Let's not worry about this. But uh, let's don't crack stress, on. Charlie. Yeah, let's crack on because Jimmy the Simbin's got you fired up. He texted the group chat today, and you're sick to death of the Simbin lottery. It's very very hard to work out. No, no, are oh, you not? Just, I thought you want to talk about the Simbin lottery. I do want to talk about it, but okay. be careful what you wish for if you want consistency. Because the only way to get consistency is apply the laws of the game to every single situation, which I would argue you don't want to see. So cast your mind back to 2018, the start of the season, the referees where some people would say they were nitpicking, but they were doing their best to referee the game to the laws of the sport, which didn't appeal to the TV. And the, uh, the the product was affected because the referee was blowing lots of penalties and people in the media were blowing up. The game's not flowing. The referees ruined the game. But hang on, they're being consistent. 
and they got so close and all they needed to do was have the balls to keep going and you would have got conformity. You would have got, this is the new environment. How do we win a game? We're going to have to be offside because if you're offside, you're offside. For those that watch the European Championships, Denmark played Germany. Is he offside? It's a millimetre. Mm. But he's offside. Because that's the rules, sorry, the laws of the sport. Is you cannot be, any part of your body cannot be in front of the defender or whatever the, the laws of the offside is in um, soccer. So that's the laws. Was the decision correct? Yes. Is that why it was bought in? Probably not. But you get consistency, right? You never get the hand of God happening again. You take away all that. You ruin the emotion of sport. And people are, but, but that's not what it, no, he's, he's, he's only just offside, but, but he is. Again, back to 2018, the referees were enforcing the laws of the game and people didn't like it. And the NRL, the NRL just went, oh, let's just, we're going to be more lenient now. We're, we're, we're just, sorry, we're going to be more relaxed. We're going to take more of a, um, the, the old school approach. And then the game changed and people were in, uh, allowed to then lie on and interfere at the rock. And it's, it's not just the refs also have a flow of the game and understanding the other good refs know when they need to call a penalty. Like well, that's what separates the good refs from the bad refs. Understand the flow of the game. Well, you could make a very good point for that, Charlie, about understanding the flow of the game and knowing when to, um, when teams are going too hard, blow a penalty versus when they they just need to let that go. Yeah, when because teams are, are on top and they deserve to have. Yeah, you know, because they are also affected by the commentary and the not about whether they get decisions wrong. They they are affected by that, but also by the fact of like, well, am I blowing this? Am I blowing too many penalties here? And, and and teams play that game. Unfortunately, all the blame goes on the referee. The players, the coaches don't take any responsibility when they're part of the problem. Mm. So, and then in terms of the symphony, it it just, it needs to be reviewed and it's going to be reviewed. But for the time being, just have simple, this is a, this is 10 minutes and this isn't. So yeah. if the person goes, there's a couple recently about the horizontal, and one that caused outrage a couple of weeks ago, Roger Tuivasa-Shek in the Gold Coast. But if that is the standard, then that's the standard. Coach Robinson spoke about it with Dominic Young when he cleaned up Blake Taff. If that's the standard, that's okay. We'll accept that. But it's got to be applied each and every week. Mm. So a, a clear understanding, almost like a, a political party's... Um, manifesto this is what this is our game is going to look like and and then we get on with it also no coach or club ever calls about ever mo moans about times where they win the lottery and i'm not talking about when it happens to the opposition i'm talking about when players don't go to the simbin hmm. they never go <laughs> i'll tell you what it's, who won the lottery today old mate never got sent and also if you don't like the lotteries don't play it Play a different game. <laughs> Buy some government bonds because <laughs> they guarantee your results. Yeah. And yeah. don't moan about lottery plays that don't come off because, sorry, if I'm coaching, don't ever pick the legs up and drive because you're entering the lottery here. You're buying a ticket. You know what? I'm going to buy some government bonds and I'm just going to clamp the legs down and take them to the ground. But you could argue the, the bunker should be the government bond because the yeah. technology they have at their disposal. Yeah, yeah. You, you could. Did you hear the audio of the Roger Tuivasa-Shek um, Simbin? I did, but I can't recall it. Yeah, it was It was like they had the audio from where the, the bunker, the way they were describing what was going on didn't really line up with what actually yeah. happened. They made a – the bunker thought that he was dropped on his head or, or had forceful impact to his head. That's not a sim bin. That's not, what that – Roger Tuvasek was a sim bin. And the, govern, uh, the, the bunker should be the government bond. Yeah, well, you, you, you make a great point. And then maybe that's where we need to look at as a game, as a whole, to go – because play, players, coaches, clubs, 
commentators, fans have complained about referee inconsistency since the game, very the game's inception and sports inception. Since sporting contests were begun, the referees in all sports have been an issue. We do, however, we're never going to be able to solve this problem until you get um, robot referees, which will apply consistency and, like I say, be careful what you wish for. But I, I think that it does need to be revamped. We do need to reconsider if simbinings are a good or bad thing for our sport. Wayne Bennett spoke about just bringing them in for um, acts of... Um, not foul play, so it would be professional fouls yeah. only, and acts of foul play are either send off or match review. I don't disagree with that. I think that's something that would be looked at. But then you've got the other argument of like, well, you need to showcase the fact that you are penalising this foul play, otherwise it's allowed to continue on, and what the um, potentialities could be from that. Simbins do provide a lot of entertainment value, though, as well. Like well, if a, yeah. you know, a player gets simbin, all right, now it's, this is a chance of 10 minutes to get back in the game if you lose well or 10 minutes to extend your lead. Like it becomes a really crucial moment in the game when a player's simbin. So I think taking that away would be a negative for like the viewing experience. But they what they have to do is figure out what a simbin is for a hip drop, what a simbin high tackle is, and make it very clear because it should be crystal clear it's not fucking hard. Well, again... They kind of did that in Magic Round a couple of years ago, didn't they? Well, that was the crackdown to, to try and avoid some lawsuit. Newsflash players, you play in rugby league, you might have a head knock every now and again, and there can well, be repercussions for it. You're not wrong where you say that, Charlie. Yeah. But again, careful what you wish for. Because if all head contact is going to be sent to the bin, then that's what that's what it might look like. If you can, If you're going to take one positive of that Magic Round... It was consistent. What I will say is I think rugby league is in a fantastic spot at the moment it, and the it, quality of the game is exceptional. It is. And, you know, coaches speak about it because they are perfectionists mm. and they're chasing something that doesn't exist. Yeah. So the perfectionist is the perfect game. No one's ever coached or played the perfect game mm. and they'll always look for improvement. And that... That's how they are drilled. That's how they are wired up. And it also the same with the players. And a lot of the ex-players that are in commentary are, are striving for perfection with this game that we love, mm. which is almost unachievable. Yeah, that's a very good point. This is a so, very good point. But you're, you're right, Charlie. The game is great, but we still look to how can we make it better? Is that an Austra like Australian thing? Because like, I think in American sports, I don't know if they really like, they focus more on the players and... The, like things like that. I don't know if they then try and pick apart everything that happens and to the same. I feel like rugby league sometimes maybe we like, maybe sometimes we're a bit negative about the game overall. No, you, you or, know what, Charlie? You make a very good point. Like, so basketball, hmm. for example, you know, foul play, the, the referees are very, very rarely um, publicly criticized. Yeah, under much scrutiny at all, really. You know, and they've, a great podcast whistleblower um, on Donahue, Donahue or Donahue. The Gambler. Uh, yeah. They did a Netflix thing on it, but this podcast called Whistleblower, the series mm. that sort of speaks of high level corruption. But again, like these referees were blown fouls, but it was like, oh, they they just move on with it. Yeah. Same with NFL. The, oh, there's a flag. Can you ever remember like listening to NFL commentary around officiating I, 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 can't. I, I can't i can't english premier league like there's a lot yeah. of it with var var gets hammered so maybe it's like an english australian yeah. thing yeah, it could be a, could be a cultural thing yeah. where that's hashtag leave the refs alone no no nah. nah, we'll keep to get stuck into them but act on the footy it's an incredible round of footy because we've got a couple superstars back which we'll get to their game surely but just quickly reese walsh is back Kalen pong is back it's going to be a great round of footy and it kicks off Thursday night. Eels against South Sydney, Jimmy. Um, it's going to be an interesting game, this one, because South are starting to build a little bit of run. They've won four in a row. If they win this one, maybe they start to believe in finals, but it's still a huge, huge run they need to go on to make finals. 
they're not playing finals. Yeah, I I agree with you, but I think South fans are starting to believe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, well done. You're wasting your time. Just give up. No, don't. Didn't say that. Give up on finals. That's what you're saying. Don't believe. Don't believe. Invest your emotional energy somewhere else. Yeah. Believe about next year. You. They they can't play finals. No chance. And I know, like, I, I know what it's like when you're in those four walls or you support of a team. And you're like, you know, the classic liver. Remember Istanbul, lad. <laughs> Remember Istanbul. You're like, yeah. All right. South fan, like, look, you're not playing finals. Speaking of fans, you know, England um, yeah. and Bellingham's goal. I was watching this um, this interview. Like these, these few geezers has left, and like they're getting interviewed by Sky Sports. It's like, what England have scored? Oh, I can't get back in. <laughs> like you, yeah, yeah, the, no the, pass the, outs. yeah, no pass out. Yeah. yeah, you can't get back in. He was nah. just like, oh, one one. I'm, I'm gonna have to run and watch extra time, mate. It's his own fault. You don't, you don't leave with one goal in it. Yeah, ex- you know what, South fans, I'm saying, don't believe. But don't listen to me because sport does amazing things. But you ain't playing finals. Also, you think 13 wins is needed. I actually think 12 wins is going to 12 and a draw? 12 and a draw will get you there this year. You I reckon? Think. Yeah, I think so. Well, 13 wins guarantees you. You need 13 wins last year. 12 wins didn't get you in last year. No, it didn't. And I think this year is tighter than last season. I think there's more teams in the mix. And also, the, the thing that, is messing things up is the quality of some of the teams down near the bottom four. So I'm talking about the Titans and their ability to jag some results now with their attacking football. And and also if finals goes away from them, I think South as well, that one of those teams I'm talking about, I think they're playing like a team that aren't under pressure to play finals. So then they thought that they can therefore take points off teams. Parramatta with the roster that they've got, they... You know, you can envisage them beating some of those teams in and around the the mixer for the top eight. They went very close against the Bulldogs. They really should have iced that game. Newcastle? Um, no, the Parramatta should have... Sorry, the Parramatta's game against the Bulldogs. Yeah. They should have iced that should game. Have that like, game. They should yeah. have won that game. Really, yeah. if you're inside those four walls, that's a game they should have won. Yeah. Kurt Mann goes off and they botched it. Yeah. They almost got worse. It was how not to manage a sin bin. Um... <laughs> This game, though, both these players are playing for their futures as well. Apart from the really established guys, you've got two new coaches on the way. Wayne Bennett's going to be watching this South team very, very closely. He's already started talking to the players. There's talk that Jairo's surgery that he got, the instructions came from Wayne that he should needed to rest up and get that healed. Um, well, he, they've stopped believing if Jairo... Well, they're, they're, they're it in itself. Like, when Jairo's going for surgery, that's like a, a bit of a sign that... Yeah. Your that, season's done. Yeah. And you've yeah. accepted And maybe that. that's why they pushed back a couple of weeks because maybe yeah. if they win these two games, you never know. You never know, Jimmy. You glory, that. glory oh. to South Sydney. Just watch someone <laughs> score and start pumping the badge. <laughs> um, as if anyone would ever do something as stupid as that. <laughs> <laughs> Who wins? Oh, mate, it's South. Okay. But, oh, mate, this is really hard. That, I Combank reckon that, Stadium. That's the hardest... I think that's the hardest game to pick. Well, Ladbrokes think the same. Dollar ninety, dollar ninety. It's kind of like the the Dragons Dolphins last weekend. Like I flipped and flopped like you've never seen on that. It was embarrassing. Like just pick a winner because I can see the Eels bouncing back from something like Moses, but then Salts are in form. Go with your gut, mate. You if see. I was betting on it, I'd be just backing some anytime try scorers. Yeah, the mar- or either team by six or less. You know you can do that, Ben. Yes, don't mind that, Charlie. Yeah. Um, I want to go south. Okay, then Friday night. This is actually a tough game to call as well, Friday night. Sharks, the Titans. AJ Brimson's back. He's gone to 5-8 because obviously Jaden Campbell's ruled out at the moment. Going to be very interesting to see what they do because Keanu Keeney looks a superstar. The Sharks really need this game. It's up in Coffs Harbour. They take a game there every year. It's normally a, a great moment for the players get up there, spend some time with the community. Um who are you liking, Jimmy, in that one? Well, Sharks are in need to win territory. They've lost four of their last five. Uh, their last two, very similar circumstances. Poor start. 
got back to a lead and then blew it and missed opportunities uh, through their own demise. Fitzy spoke after last week's game about uh, managing the moments. I, I really do think Cronulla need a win. I'm, I'm expecting plenty of points in this game, though. That's one thing I am expecting. There's actually, uh, I looked on Labrokes, the football special, sorry, the footy specials for this weekend. Like, game with the highest number of points Sharks v. Titans or Cowboys v. Seagulls. That is like, you've got to be picking one of those two. But I think the Sharks should just have enough because they need this. But again, like, you're in that territory now where. We spoke to Kieran Foran on um, Sunday Simbin, and he was saying just like, we believe we can go. So there's the, the all those teams down near the bottom believe they can do it, but they're almost playing without the pressure of it. So again, Sharks under all the pressure to get a win and really need a top two finish, and that's where they should be. And if anything other than a top two finish for the Sharks is a disappointing season, Considering that the ro- uh, the ro- not just the roster they have, but more importantly, their strength of schedule. So it's a, it's a no pressure v oh, sorry all the pressure v no pressure. I think the Sharks just about get the win with plenty of points on offer. I think the Titans win this. Yeah, yeah, I think the Titans win it. Just got a feeling, got a feeling the Titans. You know, Coffs Harbour is not too far from the Gold Coast. Almost, a home, <laughs> all, like, almost a home game. Um, and I think they get there. So the second Friday game, Jimmy, is the Broncos against the Panthers. Actually, just before we talk about that game, looking ahead at this round, this finals race is going to be amazing because so many teams are in it. There's like five of these games mean something for the finals. It's, just, it's great to see. Um, but the Broncos-Panthers, it's a huge game for the Broncos. It's almost must-win territory for them. But they all mean something for the finals. Tiger Storm, not really. Yeah, I suppose not. Eel South, not really. Or you sound to starting to sound like me. Well, I'm just based on your logic because it was your logic that said they all mean something, and I was like, no, they don't actually, mate. But Broncos, yeah. Panthers. Um, Is it must win for Broncos? It's not, but they could. It would be massive if they do. Because they haven't be, haven't beaten a top four team all year. They haven't won since Magic Round. The pressure is dialing up. The talk about this team missing out on finals is starting to come, and that is a a very fair assessment that they could miss finals. They're currently on seven wins. Uh, with, I think, nine games to go. Yeah, with seven and eight. So if they lose this game, they then play the Dragons uh, without all Origin players, which you would assume the Broncos would have more... um, would have a a team that's more capable of winning that game. And then the Newcastle Knights post-Origin... So, again, players backing up, all that jazz. And at that point, if things go the way that you expect them to go, they're going to need to win five from their last seven after that Newcastle. Sorry, if if they lose against Penrith and then beat the Dragons, they're going to need to win five from their last seven to get 13 wins. And that's when the pressure really comes. I I just want to see them perform rather than win. I want to see them perform. Yeah, still no Nathan Cleary for the Panthers. Coming off a defeat, the Panthers. I'm, I wonder how many times they've lost two games in a row that, in the that, last uh, four years. You know when the Cowboys beat them, I'm, I imagine Kevin Watt was just going, for fuck's sake. Yeah. <laughs> like, seriously? Yeah. He, Reese Walsh is back. is great because he actually hasn't played for them since round 12 because he went origin, then missed a couple of games yeah. because of the HIA. And good to see. He's crucial for them. He, he is m- massive. Yeah. And we all remember what happened last time. They played against each other. They jammed him and he was... Um, had that eye socket fracture yeah. and concussion. Taylor May. Yeah. So I imagine he's going to get similar treatment like in terms of that jam style defense. You know, he's going to, and he's, and you know, that is a, a young man that is under immense pressure with origin and 
the limelight of NRL and everything that comes with it. Like, but like he comes into that Brisbane side and people are looking for him to to go and win him the win them the game. Mm. That like they people now expect Reese Walsh to win them game, win Broncos the game. Yeah. And can he do it? And, and well, it's and but doing it against the Penrith team. It they, they they're all, as we know they're the be, one second best defensive team in the competition. Yeah, you said they're streets ahead on Monday as well. Yeah, the Panthers that is streets ahead of the rest of the competition. I was with your man Joshy Reynolds on Monday also, and he reckons the Roosters are going to win the comp. Look at this moment, I think. Penrith are in pole position, and may I know I said streets, and then as that podcast went on, I kept it went from streets to a couple of houses to I don't know that the, the, <laughs> rooster, next the roosters are next door neighbours, <laughs> um, but I still have the Panthers as being the pole position front runners, and obviously the experience, the different ways they've won these finals. I, I wonder if they can be beaten in a grand final, I think a team's got to beat them before that or have someone else do the dirty work for them. Not that it matters what I think, but I think the Panthers are streets ahead. I think they're streets ahead. I think at the moment I can't really see anyone beating them in a, in a grand final. Like I like the look of this Roosters team. Their middle is especially strong yeah. and with Lenya off the bench. Yeah. But just imagine if Nathan Cleary had played all year. They'd probably only have two losses, the Panthers. Well, we'll, we'll also, you know, we're talking about the Panthers now. We forget Nathan's coming back fresh. Yeah, fresh, ready for finals. No, no origin hangover. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, it's going to be tough. And Roosters have got plenty of motivation for players moving on. So if Penrith, Luai, mm. yeah, Luai, and James Fisher Harris, Harris like, yeah. I reckon this next game, Jimmy, is the game but that... I've got Panthers in that game. you got Panthers in that yeah. game, yeah, cool. Um, I reckon this next game, it's 5th the 13th. And normally you'd say, oh, that doesn't really mean much. Yeah. But this is probably the most important game of the round. I, Bulldogs against the Warriors. We've got Winston Neville, who's in here today. Doggies fan. He loves the Doggies. Um, and, yeah, this is massive, Jimmy. I really can't cannot call this game. I have no idea which way it's going to go. Well, I, I disagree. I think the Penrith... Broncos game is the most important game. Okay. It, just because the fallout from that is going to be huge if it goes one way. Yeah. Um, but the, the Bulldogs, I know what you're saying about the Bulldogs Warriors. Bulldogs can go to nine wins. Warriors can go to eight, but they can also slip to seven and ten. Seven and nine. Seven and There's nine. Seven wins, one draw, eight losses. Yes. One, only one buy. Mm. So there's only one win between these two teams. There's one win from fifth to yeah. thirteenth. Yeah, it is. Cra- it is crazy how that's set up. If it, it, it both- is, a, it is a big game for yeah, but especially with the Bulldogs because they've got a trip to Townsville and a trip to Brisbane coming up after this. Must win for dogs. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you on that. Like the dogs need this win, and we, everybody was celebrating last week. They beat the Sharks. Um, huge scalp, great defensive victory. I think the Bulldogs will have enough for the Warriors, and I know I say that through Bulldogs um, tinted glasses, but I genuinely do think they'll be able to shut them out defensively. Yeah, so at the start of the year, there was not much genuineness in your eyes when you said that, but today there was a, there's a genuine look in your eye that you believe in the doggies. I can you truly see believe that look in your eye. Yes, um, I think the Bulldogs will win as well. New Zealand Warriors are better without Sean Johnson, weirdly enough, as they well. They are. Um, you, so you said Strangely. the doggies. Next game, we don't need to spend too long on it. The West Tigers against the Melbourne Storm. Are uh, the Storm just going to be too good? Uh, I want to say yes, but I'm going to give a little bit of respect to my answer because, as you know, on uh, Sunday, Triple M commentary, Dang and Ain asked me um, during the Dragons-Dolphins game, like, oh, it should be a really interesting game between the um, uh the Panthers and the, and the Cowboys. And I was like, is it? <laughs> and I was genuinely like, no, only the Panthers are going to... How many? Mm. The Cowboys have put a line through this, like not playing any origin players. But um, look, the Storm are only going to beat themselves. They've got a couple of injuries and a couple of players missing. And they, they haven't been perfect by any stretch, but they're still up near the top. But I would be beyond surprised if the Tigers um, 
get anywhere close. Pappy's playing as well, so that'll be good. Get him back. Missed out last week. Um, and then we got a Saturday night, Cowboys against Seagulls, another game that's just massive for the top eight um, race. But, Jimmy, the Cowboys, their run home is insane. They leave Townsville once before round 27. Six of their last mm. eight are at home. They've got two buyers to come. They can make top four, the Cowboys. Who falls out? Probably the Sharks. But have you seen the Sharks run? That I know yeah, you're man, I, don't, I think the Sharks are a bit all over the shop at the moment. Mm. I reckon this Cowboys-Eels game is going to... Oh, sorry, this Cowboys-Seagulls game is going to be plenty of points. I know that. Surely Cowboys get the win at home. Yeah, you got the Cowboys. What about Turbo being back and he's playing center in the centers? Yeah, don't mind it. Do you reckon that's his future in the game? The... The recent history of injuries would suggest so, that his body is not um, capable of managing the load of fullback. Which is a shame. Which is a lot. Of, he'd be the most expensive centre in the game and by plenty. Yeah, by a lot. And how much can he impact the game? You look, when when he's on and when he's playing fullback, all those four in, play four into five carries, all those just barnstorming runs through the middle of the field the sweet plays out the back, the drop plays that started to come in. Like he's so dangerous from there and so highly involved in all aspects of the game, but in the senses he won't be. It's, Unless he uh, plays that roaming center role. They might give him a lot of freedom there. And I think he's going to play on the right is the chat. So you got the right edge of, of Manly will now be DCE, sorry, Olikowatu, DCE, um, Turbo and Saab. It's pretty lethal. It's strange that because normally teams load up their left edge. Yeah, I know, but maybe DC wants him on the right. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, get maybe Gar Garrick's been going well on the like the left. Mm. Maybe they, they think that. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not sure. I I think like I say, the evidence suggests the load of fullback is too much. But then, even on that Roman centre style play, there's gonna there's going to be games where he can't do that and you've got to hold your shape and teams will game plan for that. So it's an interesting one, but I think the reintroduction to first grade most definitely in the centres. Cool. Um, so you got the Cowboys though, don't you? Did you say? I do, yes, yeah. Yeah, all right, Sunday then, Jimmy. Massive moment for the Roosters. Jared Ray Hargraves is going to become the most capped rooster of all time. It'll be his 307th game for the Chookies. Um you expect there's going to be a big turnout Sunday. Arvo will be there, actually. Yeah, we'll, we go, we'll go in that game, which should be good fun. Um, and then the Dragons, though, they're still hunting the top eight. Yes, they are. It's not an easy game. It's actually going to be a tough game for the Roosters. Yeah. Um, and obviously the Dragons will be up for redemption after the Anzac Day game. Also that their origin play, or they'll, they'll miss Ben Hunt, Jaden Sewer, and Zach Lomax for a couple of weeks. And they're right in the mixer. So... They'll want to be. It's not. It's not about coming to town to be the party poopers, spoil Jared's um, historic moment. But the dragons are in in the mixer, and they've. I think Shane Flanagan, what he's done has been absolutely sensational for me, coach of the year. Um, so far. Um, just on roosters. Congratulations to Big Jared, like. What, what an achievement considering the long and proud history of that football club and just with Jared's approach to the game would have been, um, you know, requested to change or um, faced, you know, opposition to his style of play and told he needs to change and it, this, that and the other, but he's remained very true to who he is and what works for him. Uh, someone who, you know, I'd, I don't know if enjoyed going into battle against was the is the correct phrase, but it was You were aware you were going into battle Yeah. Him. Yeah, I was. Yeah, his presence was felt and you kind of always wanted to know where he was. Because <laughs> if you didn't, he'd get you. Yeah. Um yeah, what a player. What and, and congratulations to him. Obviously got a few screws loose as well, because him and Brandon Smith, when they go on tour together, push their beds together. And make one big bed. 
which we can't forget. Yeah, that. Yeah, you, yeah, you can't, can you? That's it's not kind of there. Yeah, I'll always it's be always aware there, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When yeah. I see him, you know, throughout life, maybe down mm. the track over the next few years, he's floating around the sidelines at Roosters games. I'm gonna always going to remember that. Eye. No, no, no. Like, what? What do you and Cheese get up to under those colours? Yeah. And why? Yeah, why they, put, they couldn't yeah. really explain why, but just said, no. "Oh, it's just something we do." Yeah, yeah. Mm. Strange. Yeah. Very. Yeah. But legend, absolute legend. Um, all right, then the final game of the round, Jimmy Knights against Canberra. The big thing is that Kalen Pong is back, so he we yeah. expected him to be out until round twenty, which I think this kind of does change everything for the Knights. Him coming back. They obviously are still in the hunt for finals. During the mid-season review, you put a line through them, said they couldn't. But does this change things? Ponga come back no, three weeks ahead of schedule. No, I didn't. I said I, d- I did when Ponga was ruled out. Sorry, yes. Sorry. And then I said that yeah. they've surprised me at how well they've gone. That's right. That's at right. how well they've gone. Are they? I thought when he uh, – the because I went look back at that game against the Roosters – when he was playing versus when he was off with that hit pointer thing, like it was just a completely different team. So they've changed their style a little bit since then. And, uh, oh, sorry, since the Bulldogs game where he was ruled out with that foot injury. But he's a massive inclusion. Like, let's not forget, it was around about this time last year that they went on that run. They're not going to need to be as extreme in terms of the number of victories that they get, but... This is a game when you're coming up against the Raiders who are, I think, on the same number of wins. Yep. Yeah. I I can't see both of these teams playing finals. And it's it's strange to say at round 18. Um, no, round 19. 18? Round, round 18. Oh, round 18. Yep. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, round 18. That this is, I think this is almost like a mini knockout game. Like the, the loser... Is done. Yeah. Because you need right. to take points off the teams in and around you. I can't imagine the Raiders playing finals if they lose this game to the Knights. And I can't imagine the Knights playing finals if they lose this game to the yeah. Raiders, if that makes sense. I did completely agree with you. I think you put a line through Raiders if they lose. I mean, the thing that is in the Knights' favor is they play they play most of that bottom four. So they play the Tigers, they play the Bunnies, they play the, and they play the Titans. So they've got three of that bottom four they get to play running in. Um, they also have the Sharks, though, the Panthers, and the Broncos, and Manly. So, yeah. and the Dolphins. But I think the, the Dolphins, with Jerry Marshall King being yeah, ruled out. that's a massive loss. Yeah, man, that is, you actually haven't spoken about that. Jerry Marshall King, that, you're, do you put a line through the Dolphins now? Yeah, well, they've got the bye, haven't they, this yeah. week? I, I'm not ready to put a line through them just yet. But, geez, they were poor in that second half against the Dragons. In a game they would have fancied to win. They've got some tough fixtures coming up as well. Yeah. Like they have got a tough run home and the creativity or lack of creativity was alarming without Marshall King on the field. Yeah. Like it really was. It was it stuck out like dog's balls. Um and obviously they they'll change their approach and how they play without him in the team. But just with the difficulty of schedule it's going to be hard to see the Dolphins play um, play finals, even though they're on eight wins, I think, at this yeah, moment. Yeah, eight so. wins, yeah. Mm. Yeah, eight wins, seven losses. Eight wins, I think, seven losses. I'll just double-check, yeah. Eight and seven. Um, yeah, man, I, if they lose, after the bye, they've got the Bunnies at home. They lose that one. They It's yeah. going to be really tough for them to make the top eight. Mm. That's probably us done then, Jimmy, I reckon. Yeah, well, again, on behalf of everyone at the bye round, happy birthday, Thank Charlie. You, mate. Appreciate happy 29th. It. Thank you. Um, you forgot to ask. I forgot to ask you how your little trip away was. It was fantastic. It's fantastic. I um, went to Molly Mook with a few different people, played golf, um, and yeah, just drank oh, and went that, in the ocean. That, that was, was about it. it. Yeah, that's about it. Really, nothing to write home about. No, well, I mean, no, not really. The, oh. That sounds like a nice time. Just yeah. playing you golf. Went to, you went to, to Melbourne as well, didn't you? Melbourne, yeah, for the Origin. I was in Origin for a few days. Melbourne, that was great. Ryan Girdler and I actually had a lovely time together. So Girds and I, when we go away, did you push we, beds together? We right. didn't push beds together. We were opposite though, opposite rooms. Oh, opposite rooms, yeah. not interconnecting. In not interconnecting, connecting. So when we go away together, we normally hang out like um, most of the time. So we uh, went shopping together. Actually, oh. Girds and I, so we went and did a little bit of clothes shopping. Did you? I uh, went to Maya together. And then we after we got smoothies, banana smoothies together. We chat about life amongst other mm. things. 
can't I can't imagine Ged's going clothes shopping. Yeah, he well, it was it was his idea because I was like, oh, was I might get some stuff. He's like, oh yeah, but I'll, I thought I'll come he's with. very like minimalist. Yeah, but you need a couple of new t-shirts. We all need we all need to get t-shirts. And like, I need a pair of pants because I accidentally forgot like pants to Melbourne and we had to go to some sales function. Um, so yeah, no, you we forgot had, your pants. Forgot my pants. Yeah, yeah. But I had a had a great time. Wade Graham, mate. Wade Graham plays so much golf. He played. We went there for two days. He played golf twice. Like it's a sickness with him. Yeah, oh. game a day. Yeah, game a yeah. day. It's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. All right. Well, uh, we'll catch everyone next time. Are we? Have we got a show next week? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah, it's the week, week after we got Origin. Yep, correct. Yeah, yep. we'll be. Don't know who we got in for Origin. It's going to be a good crew though. Yeah. Probably Craig got a li- wing back. We've got the I'd live say. show, don't we? As well. I got a live show. Yeah. Yeah. Winners. I'm messaging you guys today, so by the time you're listening, you will already know. Yeah. All right. Cheers, Charlie.